Welcome to worship with us here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota. We are glad you are here to worship together on this day that the Lord has made. So let's rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for worshiping with us.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. ever-living God, throughout time you have freed the oppressed, healed the sick, and made whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and by your power restore us to wholeness of life, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading 
today is from Deuteronomy chapter 5. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we will read Psalm 81. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel, the merry harp and the lyre. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon the day of our feast. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph, going out over the land of Egypt, where I heard a voice I did not know. I eased your shoulder from the burden. Your hands were set free from the grave digger's basket. You called on me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you, you shall not worship a foreign god. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for God's sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life is in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. for this day comes from the Gospel of Mark, the second chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food. He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath, so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, or to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. 
the Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So, here we are at the official, unofficial beginning of summer. So I'm sitting in the youth room because during the summer it's fairly quiet in the youth room and it's relaxing and I'll get to that in a second. One would think there was downtime in the world of youth in this place, but not necessarily so. We have VBS coming. That's always a good time with lots and lots of littles running around. Although I must admit, I don't have a lot to do with this, right? It's mostly Nicole. After that, we have our trip to the ELCA Youth Gathering in New Orleans, which will take about 55-ish of us down there for that. That's going to be an interesting flight for sure. Then I'm back here for a week, and then we take our canoe trips into the wilderness. There's 28 youth and two adults so far. Then I come back from that, and then it's off to... Dayton, Ohio, to visit a high school friend of my wife. We're going to spend a few days with her. It's her birthday, too, so happy birthday, Lene, in advance. And then I'm back here, and then I take six young adults on a sailboat trip around the Apostle Islands on Lake Superior. So then, magically, it's time for school to start. In the midst of all of that, we have to put together the next year of Christian education in this place, which is great. Lucky for us, our new coordinator will take virtually no training as she has grown up in this congregation. Even still, it's a lot of work as we reimagine our confirmation program again. There's a tiny teaser. We have to do that because we've grown to the point where we're kind of like a bit out of room, so to speak, to make work the things that we need to make work as they've been in the past, right? It's always evolving. With all of this comes all that we have to do to put together church school for our little ones and senior high ministry for the big ones. Maybe we'll even start diving deeper into young adult ministry. We'll see how that goes. Lots of stuff going on and coming up. And boy, we're tired. So here I sit on a couch. I need a break. In the middle of today's text comes a mention of this. As we hear stories of Jesus healing and redefining what it means to live in the family of God, Jesus tells us something that hit me hard. The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Really? I mean, let's take that first part first, right? My study Bible says this right in the liner notes. If you don't have a study Bible, again, get one. They're really great. But mine says this, right? Jesus indirectly asserts his authority to pluck and eat grain on the Sabbath. And as a general statement, he claims that observing the Sabbath is not a burden we perform for God, but a gift that God has given to us. Huh. So the Sabbath is a gift. Rest is a gift? It would seem that this is the message here. We know that our world has a lot coming at us. We get that. We're a busy bunch. I think that there are a couple of sides to that, right? One side is that we tend to be so busy as to miss the point of life and we all know that feeling especially this time of year we get so caught up in our to-do list either written or imagined that we miss the stuff that makes life worth living we put blinders on we zero in on our job and the stuff that we need to do or buy or deal with we have a burden of life that requires that we do the work that we think only we can do. If we don't do it, it won't get done. How many times do we tell ourselves this? Now maybe that's true from time to time, but most times it's probably not as true as we try to tell ourselves. We chase money to our detriment. 
I'm certainly not saying that we can take a blasé attitude toward our financial responsibilities, but I am reminding all y'all, and myself as well, that we can't take it with us, right? Like the parable tells us, right? Fill your barns. For so many of us, that's the purpose of life. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it does not. Doesn't really play out like we think it will. We spend so much time on our imagined to-do list of responsibilities, we miss the good stuff, right? And then we hear Jesus is Lord even of the Sabbath. Even? I wonder what that really means. I mean, we generally accept that Jesus is Lord of all, and it usually means, I mean, all usually means everything. Why then does Jesus point out that he is Lord even of the Sabbath. Maybe that means that Jesus is reminding us that he's Lord of everything, even of our rest. Okay, enough of the to-do list stuff. How do we rest, right? If we can convince ourselves that our to-do list probably isn't the end-all and be-all of our existence, how do we rest? What does Sabbath look like in our world? I am not quite sure there is a one-size-fits-all answer to that. Not only that, but can we, can we add to that the consideration that there's a whole bunch of different things in our life which require Sabbath? I mean, of course, there's the physical work. I get that. It is not hard to imagine that we need Sabbath. But it's also probably not hard to imagine that we need Sabbath from our mental work. But, what about social media? Do we need Sabbath from that? How about the influx of information that comes at us from all directions, right? We're in an information-rich society. Do we need Sabbath from that input as well? So much from which we need rest. How do we get it? How do we get rest? When I was in my previous call, I had a congregation full of farmers, for sure. I was in eastern North Dakota in really rich farm country. Produced a lot. It was a lot of work. I can tell you with a whole bunch of confidence from my time with them and with my own father-in-law, who farmed and ranched all of his life, that when it was time to harvest, rest had to wait. When it was time for calving, rest had to wait. Now, that did not mean that there was no such thing as Sabbath in my father-in-law's world. There was. It just came when he and God figured it was time to rest. And that rest was rejuvenating, right? The Sabbath refueled him for the work to which God called him. I should probably add here that this is about all a bit disingenuous from my standpoint, right? There's a whole bunch of people that are going to be listening to this going, uh, hello, Poet, know thyself. People that know me know that I have a hard time taking Sabbath from all the things in my life and my world. But as I wander through them, I'm starting to think that that probably should change. Just know that this, at least at this point, is a bit more of a do as I say, not as I do kind of deal. I think that'll change, though. I think it probably has to. Jesus tells me it has to. Sabbath is a gift. That's what the scripture for today says, right? Sabbath is a gift from God that is meant to help us live the life that God has gifted us and imagined for us. If we don't take that Sabbath from time to time, we're going to miss out on the gift. So let's also not forget that this day of rest that God has given to us is not only for us, it's for us to connect with him, right? This is a time when we can try to turn down the volume of the noise of the world so that we can hear God speaking his love to us and leading us into this amazing life. Of course we can connect with God all the time. Of course we can. But Sabbath focuses our hearts on God in a way that our everyday life can't usually do. When we do this, we turn our lives to God in a way that the world tends not to embrace. But it turns us toward God 
toward God and and enables us to do what we do all day, every day, for God instead of ourselves. This rest, then, is what we do so that we can see God and God's activity in a new and clearer way. This is how we refuel and regenerate. If we can reorient our lives toward God, then Sabbath turns from a required burden into a welcome and necessary gift. If only we could get there. Maybe the journey toward this is the journey toward, is the journey that we're all on, whether we know it or not. Maybe we can even start to see this as a gift, as a gift path, if you want to put it that way, in which we can all participate. If we are the body of Christ and we're called to care for each other, if we are all supposed to be the hands and feet and voice of Jesus in our world, then maybe we're supposed to be the ones that pass on the gift of Sabbath to each other. How does that redefine our expectations? I wonder how that plays out. What would it look like if we cared about each other's Sabbath? Add that wondering to your mental to-do list. And then rest from it and let God take care of it. Amen. church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. 
Guide your church to expression of faith that bring rest and release. Teach your faithful people to be attentive to the spiritual, physical, and societal weariness of our neighbors, that we proclaim your grace through tangible acts of mercy and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Keep us mindful of the rhythms of nature as the days lengthen and the seasons shift towards summer. Grant relief to areas facing flooding or drought and bring favor favorable weather for the flourishing of crops, gardens, and orchards. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Where there is affliction in our world, bring healing. Where world leaders are perplexed, bring clarity of vision. Give a spirit of discernment to political advisors, institutional researchers, economic analysts, and all vocations that inform the work of governments and policymakers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Provide wholeness and respite to all who are weary, those who struggle in any way, and those who care for them. Strengthen first responders and healthcare workers in their times of exhaustion or frustration. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Stir, in our, heart, stir our hearts toward abundant generosity among neighbors who experience hunger and food insecurity. Bless feeding ministries and community food efforts, especially community gardens, farmers markets, food pantries, and little free pantries. Open both our hearts and our tables. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember the communion of saints whose lives made visible the life, the saving life of Jesus Christ. Guide us by their example to embody the treasure of your love for the sake of our world until we come to our final rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Take a moment to share a sign of that peace with those gathered around you. There's always a lot going on here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and as we round the corner into summer, there's a bunch of stuff that's happening here. I'm sure there's lots of stuff going on in your communities of faith as well. This is usually the time when our kids, our young people, take off on lots and lots of trips, so we covet your prayers for that. We covet your prayers for safe travel and for adequate fundraising, I'll put it that way, so support those kids. This is formational stuff for them. And youth ministry, of course, is near and dear to my heart. So I would invite you to contact whatever community of faith you are involved in and see how it is that you can be supportive of that as well. There's also a lot of other stuff going on. You can go to our website or all our social media sites and you can get engaged in what's going on here. Or I invite you to do the same with your own communities of faith. In the meantime, we're glad that we can be here for you through this broadcast, either online or on back, and that we can bring God's message to you wherever you are. Thanks. Oh, 
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. And so gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I invite you to gather your bread and your wine or grape juice. And as we are about to receive a bit of God's grace in these elements, I invite you to gather those elements together. You can take your bread and take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. In the same way, take your grape juice or your wine, and you can take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for worshiping with us here in Bismarck at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We come to you over Beck Communications. This particular broadcast on Beck is covered completely by the generosity of the people that wish to, con to continue to see it go. So if you're one of those people, you can contact our church office and they would gladly tell you how you can participate in this ministry. Other than that, we thank you for being here with us today. Now go into your week knowing that you are fed and nourished by the Spirit and that God accompanies you always.
Thank you. 